Welcome to Supply Chain. In this lecture, we'll be looking to identify the key factors to be considered when designing a distribution network, discuss the strengths and weaknesses of various distribution options, and then understand how online sales have affected the design of distribution networks in different industries. So let's get started. So distribution is the steps taken to move and store a product from the supplier stage to the customer stage in a supply chain. This drives profitability by directly affecting supply chain cost and customer value. Distribution occurs between every pair of stages in supply chain, raw materials, Components are moved from suppliers to manufacturers and finished products are moved from the manufacturer to the end consumer. Now the choice of distribution network can achieve supply chain objectives from low cost to high responsiveness. It would be no exaggeration to state that two of the world's most profitable companies Walmart and 7-Eleven Japan have built their success of their entire business around outstanding distribution design and operation. And the same is true from Amazon, which uses that from an online sales perspective. So let's look at the factors influencing distribution network design. At the highest level, performance of a distribution network should be evaluated along the value it provides to a customer and the cost of meeting customer needs. So a firm must evaluate the impact on customer service and cost as it compares different network options. The customer needs that are met influence the company's revenue which along with costs then decide on the profitability of the delivery network. Now here are some elements of customer service which are in influenced by a network structure. We can look at response time, product variety, product availability, customer experience, time to market, order visibility, and returnability. If you look at the response time, is the amount of time it takes for a customer to receive an order. Product variety is the number of different products or configurations offered by a distribution network. Product availability is the probability of having a product in stock when the customer order arrives. Customer experience includes the ease with which customers can place and receive orders and the extent to which this experience is customized. Time to market is the time it takes to bring a new product to market. Order visibility is the ability of customers to track their orders from placement to delivery. Returnability is the ease with which a customer can return unsatisfactory merchandise and the ability of the network to handle such returns. It seems at first that a customer always wants the highest level of performance along these directions. But in practice, this is not always the case. Customers ordering a book at Amazon are willing to wait longer than those who drive to Barnes & Noble store to get the same book. But in contrast, when you look at product variety, Customers can find a larger variety of books at Amazon compared to Barnes & Noble store. So the trade-off is between fast response times and high level of product variety. Firms that target customers that tolerate long response times require only a few locations that may be far from the customer. These companies can focus on increasing the capacity of each location. In contrast, focus Firms that target customers who value short response times need to locate facilities close to them. So these firms have a lot of facilities 
each with low capacity. Thus, it decreases the response time the customer desires, but increases by increasing the number of facilities required in the network. Now, supply chain costs are also affected by the network structure because it affects how, the, how much inventory you're having, transportation, facilities and handling, and um, information. Notice that these four of six supply chain drivers that we discussed in the previous section. The other two drivers are sourcing and pricing, also affect the choice of distribution system, and the links will be discussed when relevant. So let's look at the first uh, playoff, number of required facilities with desired response time. And you can see that these are opposing forces, and we've already talked about that. Let's look at inventory costs and the number of facilities. So if you want to decrease your inventory costs, firms try to consolidate the num and limit the number of facilities in their supply chain network. So for example, with fewer facilities, Amazon is able to turn its inventory 10 times a year, whereas Barnes & Nobles has a huge number of facilities, achieves only about three turns a year. Also, we can look at transportation costs and the number of facilities. So inbound transportation costs are costs that occur in bringing a material into a facility. And outbound transportation costs are the costs of sending material out of a facility. Outbound transportation costs per unit tend to be higher than inbound because inbound lot sizes are bigger. For example, Amazon Warehouse receives truckloads, full truckloads of shipment for books on inbound, but ships out small packages with only a few books per customers. So increasing the number of warehouse locations decreases the outbound distance to the customer, makes outbound transportation distance a smaller fraction of the total distance traveled. Thus, as long as inbound transportation economies of scale are maintained, increasing the number of facilities decreases total transportation cost. But if the number of facilities increases to a point where inbound lot sizes are so small, it results in significant loss of economies of scale in inbound transportation, increasing the cost. Now let's look at facilities cost and number of facilities. Facilities cost decrease as number of facilities are reduced. But initially, there is a huge drop because of consolidation. And because this will reduce your fixed costs by reducing the number of property, plant, and equipment. So Amazon achieved a property, plant, and equipment turnover of 19 whereas Barnes & Nobles has only seven. So the total logistics cost is the sum of inventory, transportation, facility costs for a supply chain network. As the number of facilities increase, the total logistics cost first decrease, then increase as we've seen here. Amazon has more than one warehouse primarily to reduce its logistics cost and improve the response time. If a firm wants to reduce the response time to its customers further, it may have to increase the number of facilities beyond a point where its logistics cost is minimized. And therefore, your logistics cost might start increasing at this point of time. Let's look at some design options for a distribution network. So design network choices from manufacturer to end consumer result on two key decisions. And the first one is, will the product be delivered to the customer location or be picked up from a pre-arranged site? The second one is, will product flow through an intermediary or intermediate location? 
based on the firm's industry and the answers to these questions, there are six different designs that may be used to move product from factory to customer. These are manufacturer storage with direct shipping, manufacturer storage with direct shipping and in transit merge, distributor storage with carrier delivery, distributor storage with last mile delivery, manufacturer distributor storage with customer pickup, retail storage with customer pickup. Let's look at each of these networks. Manufacturer storage with direct shipping. In this option, product is shipped directly from the manufacturer to the end customer. This bypasses the retailer who takes the order and initiates the delivery request. So you can see here, the information flow is to the retailer, then goes to the manufacturer, but the shipping is directly from manufacturer. So this is called drop shipping. Retailer carries no inventory and information flows from customer to retailer to manufacturer. Online retailers such as eBags and Nordstrom use drop shipping to deliver goods to end customers. The biggest advantage of drop shipping is the ability to centralize inventory at the manufacturer so you can kind of aggregate demand across retailers uh, that it supplies. As a result, the supply chain is able to provide a high level of product availability with low levels of inventory. The key issue with drop shipping is the ownership structure of inventory at the manufacturer. If specified portions of inventory at the manufacturer are allocated to individual retailers, there is little benefit in aggregation, even though inventory is physically aggregated. Benefit of aggregation is achieved only if the manufacturer can allocate at least a portion of available inventory across retailers on an as-needed basis. The benefits of centralization are highest for high-value, low-demand items with unpredictable demand. The decision of Nordstrom to dropship low-demand shoes satisfies this criteria. Similarly, bags sold by e-bags tend to have high-value and relatively low-demand. Inventory benefits of aggregation are small for items with predictable demand and low value. Thus, drop shipping does not offer significant inventory advantage to an online grocery seller who is selling staple items such as detergent. For slow moving items, inventory turns can increase by a factor of six or higher if drop shipping is used instead of storage at retail stores. So, and, and the drop shipping also offers manufacturers the opportunity to postpone customization until the customer has placed the order. Postponement, if implemented, then further lowers inventory by aggregating to a component level. For its customized machines, Dell holds inventory as common components and postpones product customization, thus lowering the level of inventory carried. So inventory, if you look at the costs, inventory costs are typically low with drop shipping. Transportation costs, however, are higher because of increased shipping and disaggregated, sorry, increased distance and disaggregated shipping. Now, if you look at the facility and handling because of aggregation, this results in lower facility costs because everything is handled in one facility. And some save on handling cost if manufacturer can manage small shipments or ship from production line. But you really need significant investments in information infrastructure to integrate the manufacturer and retailer. Right, so this is at the cost level. Now let's look at the service level. Response times tend to be long of at least one to two weeks because of increased distance and two stages for order processing. Response times may vary by product and thus complicating receive, uh, receiving. Product variety is high and it's easy to provide that. Product availability also, because you have this large less response time, 
you can actually provide a high level of product availability. And there is aggregation at the manufacturer. Now, customer experience, good in terms of home delivery, but it can suffer if order from several manufacturers is sent in partial shipments. Time to market is fast with the product available as soon as the first unit is produced. Auto visibility is difficult, uh, but it's important from a customer service perspective. And then finally, we look at returnability. Returnability is expensive and quite difficult to implement. In contrast to drop-in shipping, the next model we are going to look at is manufacturer storage with direct shipping, but it has what we call as in-transit merge. So the orders still go from the retailer, uh, customer to the retailer, to the factories. Then the factories all send it to a in-transit carrier who then sends it to the customer. So here, our inventory is similar to drop shipping. We can have low inventory, but we do have lower transportation cost because of this, um, everything going to an in-transit mer merge here, and therefore we can reduce our transportation costs. This does um, require more coordination because we, we are trying to do a single delivery rather than phase delivery. If you order a product, uh, with multiple items coming from different manufacturers. They will all get to this in-transit person, um, and then you will get the entire product together. But that requires extra coordination, so you need more information, and therefore you need better investment in information. Facilities and handling also. Uh, handling cost is higher, uh, but receiving cost is lower at the customer. Now, from the other side, the service factor, um, your response time is very similar to drop shipping. Uh, product variety similar, product availability, all these three are similar to drop shipping. But customer experience can be better than drop shipping because there is only one single delivery. Time to market, order visibility, and returnability are similar to drop shipping. So let's take um, the an example. Um, and this is used predominantly um, by Dell, uh, when a customer orders a PC from Dell, along with a Sony monitor, the package carrier picks up the PC from the Dell factory, monitor from the Sony factory, and then merges the two before making a single delivery for the customer. The next part is distributed storage with carrier delivery. Under this option, inventory is not held by manufacturers at factories but is held by distribution uh, distributors, retailers, and the intermediate warehouses. Um, and package carriers are used to transport products from intermediate location to the final customer. Amazon and industrial distributors like WW Granger and McMaster Car have used this approach combined with drop shipping from a manufacturer or distributor. Information and product flows both go through the distributor uh, right at the center. Now, if you look at the cost factor, it is inventory is definitely higher than manufacturer storage. This is because the difference is not so fa uh, large for faster moving goods, but can be very large for slow moving items. Let's take an example of Amazon and WW Granger. They stock only the slow to fast moving items at their warehouses with very slow moving items stocked further upstream. In some instances, postponement of product differentiation can be implemented with distributed storage but it does require that the warehouse develop some assembly capability. Distributor storage, however, requires less inventory than a retail network. Amazon achieves 10 turns of inventory annually using warehouse storage, whereas Bounds and Nobles achieves about three turns using retail stores. So you can see how efficient 
Amazon is in turning over inventory. When it comes to transportation costs, it's lower than manufacturer storage because of economic mode of transportation. Example, truckloads can be employed for inbound shipments to the warehouse, which is closer to the customer. Unlike manufacturer storage, under which multiple shipments, shipments may need to go out for a single order, customer order, with multiple items, distributor storage allows outbound orders to the customer to be bundled into a single shipment, which further reduces transportation cost. Distributor storage provides savings on transportation of faster moving items relative to manufacturer storage. Now let's look at facilities costs. Facilities of warehousing are somewhat higher than manufacturing storage because of loss of aggregation. Processing and handling costs are compar comparable to manufacturing costs unless factory is able to ship to the end customer directly from the production line. In that case, distributor storage has higher processing costs. From a facility cost perspective, distributor storage is not appropriate for extremely slow moving height items. Now we come to information infrastructure needed for distribution storage is significantly less complex than what is needed for manufacturers, uh, decreasing the need to coordinate the two completely. Real-time visibility between customers and warehouses is needed, whereas real-time visibility between customer and manufacturer is not. Visibility between distributor warehouse and manufacturer can be achieved at a much lower cost than real-time visibility between your customer and the manufacturer. Now let's look at the service factors. Response time under distributor storage is better than manufacturer storage because distributor warehouses are on average closer to the customer and the entire order is aggregated at the warehouse before being shipped. Amazon, for example, processes most warehouse stored items within a day and then takes three to five business days using ground transportation for the order to reach customers. Now, when it comes to product variety, warehouse storage limits to some extent the variety of products that can be offered. WW Granger does not store store very low demand items at its warehouses, relying on manufacturers to drop ship those products to the customers directly. When it comes to customer experience, customer convenience is high with distributed storage because the single shipment reaches the customers in response to the order. Time to market is um, higher than manufacturer storage because of the need to stock another stage in the supply chain. Order visibility becomes easier with manufacturer storage because there is a single shipment from the warehouse to the customer and only one stage of supply chain is involved in directly filling the customer order. Returnability is better with manufacturer storage because better than manufacturer storage uh, because all returns can be processed at the warehouse itself. So this is distributor storage with carrier delivery and the next uh, option which we are going to look at is distributor storage with last mile delivery in this particular case last mile delivery refers to the distributor retailer delivering products to the customer's home rather than using a package carrier so webvan peapod albertson have used last mile delivery uh, in the grocery industry. Amazon has launched local express delivery to provide same-day delivery to the customers. Companies such as Cosmo, Urban Fetch try to set up home delivery networks for a variety of products but fail to survive. The automotive spare parts industry is one in which distributed storage with last mile delivery is the dominant model. It is too expensive for dealers to carry all the spare parts in inventory. Thus, original equipment manufacturers, OEMs, tend to carry most of the spare parts at a local distribution center, typically located 
no more than an hour's drive from the dealers and often managed by a third party. The local distribution center is responsible for delivering needed parts to a set of dealers and makes multiple deliveries per day. Unlike package carrier delivery, last mile delivery requires the distributor warehouse to be much closer to the customer. Given the limited radius that can be served with last mile delivery, more warehouses are required compared to when a package delivery is used. So let's look at the cost factors. So your distributor uh, storage with last mile delivery requires higher inventory than other options except retail stores because it has a very, very low level of aggregation. From an inventory perspective, warehouse storage with last mile delivery is suitable for relatively fast moving items that are needed quickly and for which some level of aggregation is beneficial. Auto parts required by car dealers fits this description. Among all distribution networks, transportation costs are very high here because um, most of the delivery is done to individuals. Package carriers aggregate delivery across many retailers and are able to obtain better economies of scale than are available to distributor retailer attempting last mile delivery. Delivery costs, including transportation and processing, can be more than $20 per home delivery in the grocery industry. Last mile delivery may be somewhat less expensive in large, dense cities. Transportation costs may also be justifiable for bulky products for which customers are willing to pay for home delivery. Home delivery of water and large bags of rice has proved quite successful in China, where high population density has helped decrease delivery cost. Transportation costs of last mile delivery are best justified in settings where the customer is purchasing large quantities. This is rare for individual customers, but businesses such as auto dealership purchase large quantities of spare parts on a daily basis and can thus justify daily delivery. Home delivery to individual customers can be justified for bulky items like five gallon jugs of water in the United States or large bags of rice in China. In each instance, last mile delivery is cheaper and more convenient than customer picking up their own bottles or bags. So in this option of last mile delivery, facility costs are somewhat larger than for a network with retail stores. Uh, so it is lower for a network with leaders retail stores, but much higher than for either manufacturer storage or distributor storage with package carrier delivery. Processing costs, however, are much higher than for a network of retail stores because all customer participation is eliminated. A grocery store using last mile delivery performs all processing until the product is delivered to customer's home, unlike a supermarket where the customer does a lot more work. The information infrastructure with last mile delivery is similar to that for distributor storage with package carrier delivery. However, it does require additional capacity for scheduling deliveries. Now we focus on the service factors. Um, response times are very quick. Uh, it's almost same as next day delivery. Cosmo and Urban Fetch try to provide same day delivery, whereas online grocery stores typically provide next day delivery. Product variety is generally lower than distributor storage with carrier delivery. The cost of providing product availability is higher than every option other than retail uh, store. The customer experience can be very good in this op option particularly when you are when you're doing large bulky hard to carry items time to market is even higher than for distribution storage with package carrier delivery because the new product has to penetrate deeper before it is available to the customer 
order visibility is less of an issue given that deliveries are made within 24 hours order tracking feature does become important to handle exceptions in case of incomplete or undelivered orders of all the options discovered returnability is best with last mile delivery because trucks making deliveries can also pick up returns from customers returns are still more expensive to handle than at a retail store where the customer can bring the product back so the next distribution network we're going to look at is manufacturer or distribution distributed storage with customer pickup now in this approach inventory is stored at the manufacturer or distributor warehouse but customers place their orders online or on the phone and then travel to designated pickup sites to collect their merchandise so you can see here that um, here is where the information is flowing and then back up and then orders are shipped to the storage sites to pick up points from their storage sites to the pickup points um, and some of the examples are 7dream.com uh, which is operated by 7-eleven japan which allows customers to pick up online orders at a designated store business to business example is ww granger whose customers can pick up their orders at one of the retail outlets some items are stored at pickup locations whereas others may come from a central location in the case of 7dream.com Order is delivered from a manufacturer or distributor warehouse to the pickup location. Now, in 2007, Walmart launched its site to store service that allows customers to order thousands of products online at Walmart and have them shipped free to a local Walmart store. Items arrive in stores seven to 10 business days for the order to be processed. Customer receives an email notification and then their order is ready for pickup. So you can see the information flows, which are similar to 7-Eleven Japan Network. 7-Eleven uh, has distribution centers where product from manufacturers is cross-docked and sent to retail outlets on a daily basis. An online retailer delivering an order through 7-Eleven can be treated as one of the manufacturers with deliveries cross-docked and sent to appropriate 7-Eleven units. So here inventory costs using this option can be kept low with either manufacturer or distributor storage to exploit the aggregation. WW Granger keeps its inventory of fast moving items at pickup locations, whereas slow moving items are stocked at a central warehouse or in some cases at the manufacturer. Transportation costs is lower than for any solution using package carrier because significant aggregation is possible when delivering orders at a pickup site. This allows for the use of truckload or less than truckload carriers to transport orders add to the pickup site. For a company such as 7-Eleven Japan, the marginal increase in transportation cost is small because trucks are already making deliveries to stores and their utilization can be improved by including online orders. As a result, 7-Eleven Japan allows customers to pick up orders without a shipping fee. Facility costs can be high if new facilities have to be built. A solution of using existing sites can lower additional facility costs. Just for example, 7dream.com, Walmart, WW Granger, in which stores already exist, the facility costs are low. Processing costs at the manufacturer and warehouse are comparable to those of other solutions. Processing costs at the pickup sites are high because each order must be matched with a specific customer when he or she arrives. Creating this capability can increase processing costs significantly if appropriate storage and information systems are not provided. Increased processing costs and potential errors at the pickup site are the biggest hurdle to success in this approach. Now you do need significant inf 
in infrastructure built for information systems because good coordination is needed among the retailer storage location and pickup location now let's look at the service factors response time can be is similar to package carrier delivery with manufacturer or distributor same day delivery is possible for items that are stored locally at pickup site variety and availability is similar to other manufacturer and distributor storage options there is some loss in customer experience because of the lack of home delivery experience is sensitive to, for capability of pickup location now your time to market is similar to other manufacturer storage options uh, now when you look at the customer experience and pickup locations if you have 7-Eleven, which is more than 10,000 outlets, outlets, it can be argued that the loss of customer convenience is small because most customers are close to a pickup site and co can collect an order at their convenience. Order visibility is extremely important here. The customers must be informed when the order has arrived and the order should be easily identifiable once the customer arrives to pick up. Such a system is hard to implement because it requires integration of several stages in supply chain. Returnability can be potentially handled at pickup site, making it really easy for the customers. From a transportation perspective, return flows can be handled using delivery trucks. Now, the last network is retail storage with customer pickup. This option is often viewed as the most traditional type of supply chain. Inventory is stored locally in retail stores. Customers walk into the retail stores or place an order online or by phone and pick it up at a retail store. Examples of companies that offer multiple options of order placements include Alberstone, which uses part of the facility as a grocery store, part as online fulfillment order. Customers can walk into a store or order online. Here, if you look at it, inventory, local storage increases inventory costs because of lack of aggregation fast to very fast moving items. However, there is a marginal increase in inventory, even with local storage. Transportation costs is much lower than with other solutions because of inexpensive modes of transport can be used to replenish products in retail store. Facility and handling costs are much higher. Uh, because many local facilities are required. A minimal information structure is needed here uh, because customer can walk into the store and place orders. For online orders, however, a significant information structure is needed to provide visibility. Now let's look at res service factors. Response time, same day pickup is possible if customer walks into the store. Uh, if product is available, again, so response time can be really good with this uh, model. Product uh, variety is lower than all other options uh, and product availability is more expensive to provide uh, than all other options. Customer experience depends upon whether the customer likes to shop, whether shopping is regarded as a positive or negative experience for the customer. Uh, customer experience can also be handle using based on how the store is actually modeled so an apple store or target versus a walmart there are different shopping experiences time to market is the highest here uh, because the new product has to penetrate the entire supply chain before it's available to the customer order visibility is trivial for in-store orders but it's difficult but essential for online and phone orders and then returnability is the easiest option we're going to stop this lecture here because we are we are close to about 40 minutes and this chapter is split into two lectures the second lecture will look at how you select a network uh, design and look at the competitive performance and the other aspects which are available in this chapter